So this video is about one question. Am I a runner or am I a Zwifter? I make YouTube videos about running, Zwifting, and everything in between, like overcoming crazy hard challenges on Zwift, such as the Four Horsemen. It's not so much my legs now, it's my backside. And overcoming ridiculously hard running challenges, such as 100K ultra marathons. Right, hang on, hang on. I'm hanging on, don't worry. Hang on long enough. Cute. This video isn't action packed. This video is what I'd like to consider as a motivational update video that adds some context to my other adrenaline pumping Zwift and running vids, if they are adrenaline pumping. <laughs> And to answer the question, am I a running YouTuber or a Zwifting YouTuber? I'll answer that at the end of this video. Okay, we've got the hill. Big hill. Steep hill. Recently, I've been indulging in my love of park runs. I do love a park run. And if you haven't done so already, please pop over onto my other park run videos and give them some love for me. And I've also been indulging in my love of Zwifting and Zwift racing. I've become completely addicted to Zwift in general. It's so competitive and a single-handedly helped me lose a ton of weight over the past year. I have a huge amount of events happening this year that I know will revolutionize my training habits. Check out my New Year's resolution vid for a breakdown of these events and one of those events this year being my explosive return to the Race to the Stones Ultramarathon in the summer. Race to the Stones, or RTTS, kicked off my fat to fit journey nearly five years ago now. So having said all that, I wanna start this video at the beginning. Thank you for watching my update video. So as you know, I've entered into Race to the Stones 2019, which is probably one of the reasons you're watching this video. Race to the Stones itself is 62 miles long across two days. It feels appropriate to be making this video now as almost exactly five years ago to the day, I woke up one morning, fed up with the way I looked in the mirror, overly stressed, no more than any other bloke in his late 30s that has a mortgage and family to support and who works a 70 plus hour week in a very time demand demanding and stressful corporate environment. This part of my story isn't any different to anyone who wants to work hard and who wants to provide the best in life for their fam. I don't claim to be any different, which is what I think makes my journey over the past five years relevant and relatable to almost everyone watching my videos. I'm not someone who has reached his 40s having been an elite amateur runner or cyclist from an early age. I was not a fit person throughout my teens, 20s and early 30s, who then gained a bit of a dad bod, lost a few kgs, and then made some videos about how hard running a marathon is, whilst also simultaneously smashing most other people's PBs because of the aforementioned natural fitness levels that was quickly regained through a simple training plan. That was not me. Up until my 40s, I did no sport, zero exercise, nothing. And because of that, I was hugely obese.
My channel is one that I think resonates with anyone that's Googled Couch to 5K, joined a Weight Watchers plan or paid for a gym membership without actually going because they don't know what they're doing and assume that doing anything is better than nothing, which is correct by the way. Doing something is always better than nothing because that's how you learn to get better. When I first started out, my biggest challenge was my weight. I had zero knowledge of how to train, how to run, how to cycle, etc. But these knowledge gaps piled into insignificance versus how hard it was to move a long way because of my very heavy frame. Doing any form of exercise was horrendous. Back at the end of 2018 and into 2019, a cliche time around New Year's, when everyone thinks about their shortcomings and aspirations for a new year, I was suddenly and overwhelmingly worried about the then health implications of weighing 190 kg or 30 plus stone or 420 pounds. I was starting to show signs of wear and tear, to put it mildly, and I was also worried about the consequences of my very poor diet and overly excessive alcohol consumption, massively contributed to by the pre-mentioned stressful corporate career that had a big drinking culture that did not afford me the time to make and eat healthily. All excuses, right? Yes, they are all excuses, and I am the first person to admit that. I'm speaking from experience. I 100% use these as excuses. There are very few things that can't be fixed or changed for the better. There may be things in my life that I don't wanna change or let go of, things that scare me, things that have big consequences if I walk away from them, but, and it's a big but, there are still things that can be changed and should if they have a negative effect on me, my physical and mental health, and then indirectly a negative effect on my family. Um. I will never lie on my deathbed one day, hopefully in the far, far distant future, and say I wished I worked more, I wished I spent more time breaking myself to line other people's pockets, I wished I worked that extra day, I wished I sent that extra email, I wished I held that extra meeting. Of course not. So in that moment, I had an epiphany and decided to change the path I was on. I've got 36 days until the race starts. 36 days from the moment I upload this video. I am trying to make some major lifestyle changes. I'm doing it because I know that with there being something at the end to aim for, I've got more chance of succeeding. I walked away from that career, a career and industry that I'd been in since leaving school in 1998. I went full on tree hugging vegan, which fundamentally changed my relationship with food, how I looked at food, how I bought food, and ultimately it taught me how little I knew about food. <laughs> I really need to make a video about being vegan. I'm not vegan for any hugely ideological reason. I do care about the environment and animal welfare, but I am mainly vegan for health reasons and specifically to force me to think about what I eat and put in my body. When you're vegan, for the first time especially, it's really hard to walk into a fast food restaurant and order anything you want off the menu. You have to read the ingredients and then that puts you in a state where you actually know what it is you're eating. There is quite a lot I could talk about being vegan, but this is a subject probably for another day. If you'd like me to make this video sooner rather than later, then please let me know in the comments as I have been procrastinating a while about making a, a new video about veganism. So maybe a few comments asking for it may give me a nudge that is needed. Equally, if you couldn't care less what I eat, then then say this too. That's pretty much how I feel about being vegan. Who would care? Anyway, getting back to the video. And then, having left my career, turned vegan, I probably gave up one of the hardest things in my life to give up. I gave up the one thing I had an Olympic gold medal in. I fully quit alcohol and went completely 
teetotal. If you knew me in 2018 or 2019, then being vegan wouldn't have been the most shocking change. Going teetotal was definitely the hardest, and not just for me, but also for all of those around me. If you drink more than you should, either socially or professionally, like I did because of the environment I worked in, then you will know the horror on someone else's face when they offer to buy you a beverage at the bar or at a party, and you reply with, no thank you, just a coffee or a diet coke please. After the barrage of questions, am I a designated driver, am I on medication, or do I need to get up early in the morning, to which I always replied, no, I'm now teetotal, then I can guarantee that whomever you're talking to will lose their mind, especially if you're from a working class family in the UK where having a drink is a national pastime. And even though it was never my intention to tell anyone else what to do with their own life choices, and it's still not my intention, telling someone you're a teetotal holds up a mirror to their own life decisions and puts them in a position to consider their own life choices, even for a brief second, and no one likes that feeling. So they have another drink to forget about it and then spend the rest of the evening telling you how much of a mistake you've made for giving up booze. <laughs> That's what happened with every single interaction I had in a pub, party, or club. I'm 40 odd, I don't go to clubs. I don't know why I said club. <laughs> At the very least, no one likes to sit having a drink when the person you're sitting with is stone cold sober, wondering why you're not laughing uncontrollably at a soggy crisp that looks slightly like old man Steptoe. Oh, you dirty old man. <laughs> to be fair, I did laugh. It was a very funny crisp but you get my point. So having walked away from a very well-paid corporate career, having quit booze and alienated my entire friendship circle because everyone in my friendship circle then decided that I couldn't be near a bar, pub or party anymore for some reason, and having turned completely Save the Planet vegan, grown a beard and my hair long to finish the John Lennon vibe, Thank you. I then did the only sane thing anyone in my position could do. I signed up to the Race to the Stones Ultra Marathon, a 100k walking and running event. Having never walked anywhere near this far, having never walked anywhere, doing this scared the hell out of me and forced me out of the door exercising. I only had six months to prepare and if I didn't work hard every day, I knew I would literally die, slight exaggeration but not far off, trying to complete this event. I unfortunately still weighed 190 kgs or 30 plus stone. Not many people can appreciate or even imagine how uncomfortable life is weighing that much. But because being heavy, overweight and then obese doesn't happen overnight, you become accustomed to the constant tiredness, exhaustion, lack of energy and general terrible levels of happiness and mental well-being that being fit, healthy and most importantly lighter now affords me. I'm really f***ing struggling now. A main A road, walking up what can only be described as the longest hill ever. 75k pole, up by there, halfway. <laughs> hell. What kind of trail's this? This isn't very good for shorts. Oh, 78k, and we are 1.2k from the next pit stop. Feet are so bad that the pain has just got so bad it's gone, if that makes sense. Probably doesn't. So all of this is the context for all of my videos in the past and moving forward. When you see me struggling to run 100K in the pitch dark, climb a pixelated mountain on Zwift, or run a park run in under 30 minutes, all things most runners and cyclists take for granted, then this is the context of why I feel these things are huge achievements for me. And then when someone watching me struggle to run 100K actually comments, and this was a real comment, try to run a 5K park run first, that was an actual comment I received. They've obviously missed the point of why I'm trying to run 100K. I'm not running 100K to beat the course record or even finish in the top 10, even though that would be really nice. I'm not trying to win a race on Zwift or beat my PR up the Alpe Zwift because I need to appear on Zwift's highest scoreboard like at the end of Donkey Kong Arcade. No. I do these things because it gives me a warm feeling of achievement as these are really hard challenges and I see enormous value in overcoming them when everyone else around me thought I couldn't. I wanted to get going, parked up, 
I've just left Horton in Ribblesdale. I returned to the Yorkshire Three Peaks last year and smashed it out in eight hours as only two years previous, I completely failed to walk it and it beat me. The value of overcoming a really, really hard challenge. I will also add that I only bought a smart bike and Zwift to help me get better at running as I read somewhere that cross training is great training for marathons, etc. And then I fell into the Zwift rabbit hole. These are the bits you need to push. This is also why I want to win races. That and my over addictive slash competitive personality forces me to. I've already overcome the hardest challenge I'll probably ever face, touch wood. Quitting a career that afforded me huge financial stability in favor of making videos on YouTube for free at the moment. Giving up alcohol, having been a keen professional for so long, turning vegan as the stress of buying the wrong products forced me to learn about nutrition and meal prepping. I very much appreciate the constructive criticism I get on my running, but especially on my Zwifting videos that talk about my poor cadence, which I know is abysmal, improving my VO2 max, or even that I need to focus on strengthening my, and I quote, posterior chain muscles. I don't even know what these are, let alone how to improve them. I mean, I'm assuming they're muscles in my arm. I obviously listen to constructive feedback as you will see me sometimes make videos based on recommendations. Plus, it's always good to learn more and putting myself out there on the tube, on YouTube, of course, I'm gonna get feedback, which I do welcome. But the best part of comments like these, comments about my posterior chain muscles, is that it's confirmation of how far I've come from the lost and obese bloke from five years ago to someone who creates videos on YouTube about his fitness progress through challenge and motivational videos who is obviously doing well enough that far more experienced runners and cyclists take him seriously enough to critique his posture for those 10% gains and talk to him as if he knows what he's talking about. The only gains I was worrying about before all of this was whether I should get the extra six chicken McNuggets with the Big Mac meal or not as I was on a diet and my Weight Watchers plan said I was allowed a treat. I actually have some really good news. So today I weighed myself. I need to update it on the system. I weighed myself and I've lost weight. Uh, not surprisingly, because I've done loads of racing. Um, but I'm gonna log in now and just update my settings. Previously, my last weigh-in was ages ago um, and I haven't changed it since. I have lost some weight, so I now weigh, I don't know if you can see that. So I now weigh 101.4 kg. The reason why I haven't changed it, cut long story short, I weigh myself in my local gym, someone broke it, and I don't own scales at home. I finally pulled my finger out and bought myself some scales and I've weighed myself 97.8 kg. I can't believe I'm below 100 kg considering five years ago now, I weighed 190 kg. Uh, mental. So in summary, am I a running YouTuber or a Zwifting YouTuber? Who cares? At least I'm not sat at home on the sofa eating and drinking anymore or in a job that gives me migraines on a daily basis to the point that I use alcohol to self-medicate. And most importantly, I have not set foot in a McDonald's for nearly five years. Good luck in your daily battles. I hope you're winning too. And if you're not, that's okay, as you'll never be as lost as a bloke on his own in a field at 3 a.m. in the morning without a torch because he forgot to bring spare batteries. I don't know if you can see me, this is mental. Absolutely beyond words. I don't know how I'm moving. I am riddled with issues. Tomorrow is a new day. See you in next week's video. Thank you for watching can't reach the camera so I'm just going to walk around slowly. Thanks for watching.